Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Gwennon, a radiologist from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to talk to you about carotid ultrasound imaging or carotid sonography. Those terms are used interchangeably. First, we need to talk about ultrasound in particular. We use high-frequency sound waves to produce images. We do not use ionizing radiation. The images are created just like sonar does. And in carotid sonography, we produce pictures of the two carotid arteries, which are located on each side of the neck and carry blood from the heart to the brain. Doppler ultrasound, which is a special technique that shows blood flow through a vessel, is usually part of the carotid ultrasound exam. We most frequently use carotid sonography to detect narrowing or stenosis of the carotid artery, which is a condition that increases the risk of stroke. We use it for screening in persons at high risk for stroke. We can use it in the preoperative evaluation of patients who are scheduled to undergo coronary artery or heart bypass procedures. We use it to evaluate an abnormal noise in the neck that is heard on physical exam. We use it to check the status of the carotid artery after surgery or stent placement to maintain normal blood flow. Preparation is usually pretty straightforward. Wear comfortable clothing. You may need to remove all clothing and jewelry near your neck. A loose fitting open neck shirt or blouse is ideal. An ultrasound machine looks like a fancy computer complete with a keyboard and a display and it's usually on a wheeled cart. To produce a, an ultrasound, a transducer, a wand-like object, is used to send and receive sound waves. Those sound waves bounce off an object and the echoes that return are recorded and an image is created as a result. A Doppler ultrasound can measure and show blood flow. In the image at the lower right, the carotid artery is labeled B. You can see the walls of the vessel are nice and smooth. A, adjacent to it, is the jugular vein. During an ultrasound, the patient is face up on an exam table. A clear water-based gel is applied to the skin, and a sonographer, who's an ultrasound technologist, or a radiologist, presses the transducer against the skin in various locations. Pictures are taken and then interpreted by a radiologist who is a medical doctor who has received special training in interpreting medical imaging studies. In the image at the lower right you can see the carotid artery with a small plaque. That's a calcium deposit that is a bright white structure casting a dark shadow at the lower right of the image. The benefits of sonography relative to other imaging studies are several. It is non-invasive, there are no needles involved, and so it's painless. It's widely available, it's easy to use, and it is less expensive in many cases than other imaging studies. No radiation is involved, and we can generate clear pictures of soft tissues that do not show up well on x-rays. If this procedure shows narrowing of one or both carotid arteries, then treatment can restore blood flow, avoiding a stroke. There are known known risks. There are limitations to sonography, however. Occasionally, patients are difficult to image because of the size or contour of the neck. Occasionally, dense calcium deposits in the carotid arteries may make it difficult to evaluate the blood flow within. A small amount of soft plaque may occasionally go undetected. And unfortunately, ultrasound cannot penetrate bone, so ultrasound can't visualize the entire length of the carotid artery since the last portion travels through the bone at the base of the skull. In those instances, CT or MR of the carotid arteries may be necessary. You can find out more on this website or from the American Stroke Association or the National Stroke Association, whose websites are listed. Thank you. Recorded February 2012. For more information and updates, please visit radiologyinfo.org. Hello. I'm Dr. Mark Gwennon, a radiologist from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I'd like to speak to you about thyroid ultrasound imaging or thyroid sonography. Those terms are used interchangeably. First, we need to talk about ultrasound in general. We use high-frequency sound waves to generate the images, not ionizing radiation. We create images in the same method that sonar uses, and using those, we can produce pictures of the thyroid gland, which is the butterfly-shaped gland in the front of your lower neck. We need to speak for a few minutes on the thyroid gland itself. It makes hormones that are released into the bloodstream used to regulate the body's energy use or metabolism. Lumps or nodules can grow within the thyroid gland. Some of these might be felt on physical exam. 
Others might show up on a nuclear medicine thyroid scan as a cold nodule. The vast majority of these are benign, not cancerous, and they pose no health risk. So with thyroid sonography, we most frequently uh, use this to analyze the nodules to determine if a lump in the neck is arising from the thyroid gland or from an adjacent structure, to analyze the appearance of thyroid nodules to determine if they are more common benign nodules or if the nodule has worrisome features, or to see if a thyroid nodule that we already know about has substantially grown over time. Because ultrasound provides live images, it can also be used to guide procedures such as needle biopsies, which are used to extract sample cells from an abnormal area for laboratory testing. Here's what a normal thyroid sonogram looks like. In the center of the image, you see a triangular medium gray object that is the thyroid gland itself. On the left, you see the carotid artery. On the right, the trachea or the windpipe. Under normal circumstances, the thyroid gland is a uniform medium gray on the image. Preparation is really fairly straightforward. Wear comfortable clothing. You may need to remove all clothing and jewelry near your neck. A loose fitting open neck shirt or blouse is ideal and no other preparation is necessary. An ultrasound machine looks like a fancy computer with a keyboard and a monitor on a wheeled cart. A transducer, which is a wand-like object, is used to send and receive sound waves into the body. Sound waves bounce off an object and the image is created from the echoes that return. In the lower right, uh, you can see a thyroid sonogram. In the middle and left of the screen, the medium gray object is the normal portion of the thyroid gland. On the right half of the screen, outlined by the plus signs, you can see a thyroid nodule as an oval object of a darker gray shade. During a thyroid sonogram, the patient is face up on an exam table. A clear water-based gel is applied to the skin and the sonographer or ultrasound technologist or a radiologist presses tra the transducer against the skin in various locations. Pictures are taken and those are interpreted by the radiologist who's a medical doctor with special training in the interpretation of medical imaging studies. The benefits of thyroid sonography compared to other studies are many. It is non-invasive with no needles and therefore it is painless. It's widely available, easy to use, and less expensive in many cases than other imaging studies. There's no radiation involved and we can generate clear pictures of soft tissues that do not show up well on x-rays. There are no known risks to sonography. There are some limitations. Occasionally a patient can be difficult to image because of their size or the contour of their neck. Some benign nodules have suspicious features that raise a false alarm which can cause additional follow-up exams or a biopsy to be performed. And unfortunately, thyroid function, that is whether the thyroid gland is overactive, underactive, or normal, cannot be determined with ultrasound. You can find out more from your radiologist, your local imaging facility, or this website. Thank you. Recorded February 2012. For more information and updates, please visit radiologyinfo.org.